Thanks for joining us now. On the market reaction uh, to the election results, Sylvia Jablonski defined uh, ETFs, uh, CEO. A lot of uh, everybody sees different things. Rorschach uh, test, obviously. Sylvia, people could say, well, the uncertainty has been removed, uh, and, and that's always a good thing for the markets. But if it is a, a red sweep, there are some people that think that's, uh, or at least will make the case, it's going to be inflationary or just not what markets typically want, and that is uh, single party control. Would you, would you be uh, worried if uh, the Republicans do take the House as well as the, the presidency and the Senate? Good morning, Joe. Well, I, I think, you know, if you kind of look back through history, when you had, a, you know, you had a split Congress and, and president, you, you tend to get better annu average annualized returns. They're about 15 percent or so. And when you have a Republican president and, you know, essentially same Congress, it's about 12 percent. So, you know, for average annual returns are still pretty positive, 12 percent. That's kind of in line with the S&P 500, maybe a little bit higher. So I'm not too worried about it. I think the one fear for, for markets and investors will be inflation and, and how policies impact that. But then on the other side of it, you know, if, if you look at some of the other good that can come out of it, you know, you, you kind of get like re-domestication, small caps start to rally again, um, onshoring, you know, industrial boom, manufacturing boom, energy, you know, crypto could continue to grow here. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses with, with everything, with these policies. D does it matter? to the markets if corporate tax rates do not go up? Does it matter uh, to the markets if, if there's deregulation? Or, or is, are these things offset? We see the bond market, uh, you know, yields up 12 basis points, whatever it is. Uh, we are talking potentially about, uh, about tariffs. We are talking potentially about some taxes coming down on, you know, who knows what happens with, with tips and with uh, overtime and, uh, you know, that, that sort of wish that Oprah list of giveaways that we've seen from Trump. The market, it's only 2 percent. I don't want to overstate what 1,200 points is, but it still is a very positive reaction so far to what could be, uh, you know, a higher deficit and higher inflation. Yeah, and on the other side of it, I think it, it could also be, you know, better better balance sheets, better better revenues and things like that for corporations. I do think it matters to corporations because, as you said, look at all the futures, right? The market likes it. It's rallying. And so I think it'll impact certain areas of the market more than others. So, for example, financials might be better off with the deregulation. For technology, could go either way, right? You like the deregulation. That certainly helps the Apples and, and you know, Metas and Googles of the world. But on the other side, the tariffs could be a negative and could kind of balance that out. So we'll kind of see how that lands, whether that turns out to be more of a negotiation tactic or an actual, you know, ding to some of those companies. So it really depends. But things like crypto can rally. I mean, look at MicroStrategy futures um, right now. It's it's clearly like the idea of deregulation there seems to be very favorable to markets. Would you dabble in any foreign markets? And I'm not sure. This would be a, a, a time to get long, some of them. I mean, are there concerns in, in, uh, in some European countries, in China, in, uh, you know, it's, it's a global market for someone like you. Um, I'm sure there's yeah. some consternation abroad right now uh, in, in, in some of the, the hallowed halls of, of uh, you know, but, but people in Germany, maybe even in China, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I think when we look at the markets, we'll probably have a bias towards towards U.S. and onshore, particularly things like small caps, manufacturing the idea of you know AI power growth, things like this. I, I don't know that we'll be allocating to China at the moment, just because you know there could be tensions there on trade and tariffs and things like that. So we'll have to let that play out a little bit. But I think it's very much going to be an, an onshore domestic trade, and I think that helps U.S. markets rally into the end of the year, and there'll probably be some trepidation offshore. The, uh, would you ever own a bond again? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, just I, I kind of have a bias towards equities anyway, so I'm probably not the best person to ask for that. I just think staying invested, you know, there's six point something five trillion in, in money markets right now. And if you just look at equity markets this year and just over the last hundred years, I'm just a believer in, you know, kind of dollar cost averaging into broad based indices. You know, maybe XMAG gets some exposure to something other than the MAG 7, but you know, ahead of the election, I wasn't really positioning for one candidate over the other. I think that being invested in the market is, is how you win over time. And so um, I'm going to stay long equities. There, there have been some comments that former President Trump made about, you know, I don't want to get into 
office right in time for, I don't want to be Hoover. I don't want to get in office right in time for a, a recession. And, and um, you know, it's been, you know, we, we were looking for a recession. Yeah, for the last 24 months, we were thinking about a recession. Someday there will be one. Um, and depending on some of these, these policies that we're talking about, tariffs, et cetera, I mean, do you expect the, uh, the economic picture of this country to change in the next 12 months? Do you think we're setting ourselves up for maybe that, uh, the slowdown now? Or do you think uh, Trump, with whatever he does, do you think it actually either continues growth or even uh, hastens the growth? Yeah, and I think it goes back to my comment about not positioning for the election. And I think the reason I, I didn't and I stayed invested. You might have to now. It's a, if it's a yeah, sweep. Yeah, you might have to now, now for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but but I think going into it, you know, we have a strong economy. Jobs were good. Wages were good. ISM number looks great. Manufacturing is growing. So I don't expect a recession. Kind of like regardless of who was elected within the next 12 months, we'll have to see what happens with policies, right? If you're going to spend a lot of money and cut taxes, you obviously have to raise that somewhere else, right? And I, I don't know if that comes from tariffs. I don't know kind of where that comes from maybe it comes from overall economic expansion and growth but that's you know kind of remains to be seen so Sylvia um, yes for, for a long time markets have wanted gridlock in Washington we've been yeah. asking the question lately though if that has gotten to the point where nothing gets done not only do you never get a budget you don't get um, any resolution on major issues like immigration that clearly the voters have pushed up and said that this is a priority um, that's going to mean a lot of change potentially a lot of sweeping reform, probably like we haven't seen since the beginning of the Obama administration. Um, is that good news at this point or not? Yeah, I think I think it depends on what actually what actually kind of passes through, right? So it's I, I think there's uncertainty around that. But as you said, I, I think investors and, and voters are, you know, kind of voting that they want change here. So it's it's arguably what we want and we'll have to see you know, what policies actually go into play and, and what happens. But I, I think the biggest risk when we think about just like market specific with all of this, it's going to be inflation and the path of the deficit. So yeah, we'll have well, to watch how that stays under control.